somehow all of this is going to fit into an RC car. What's going on, everybody? Today, we're starting a brand new series. And in this series, Matt from the Skill Builders Guild and myself are planning to take Tamiya 114th semi trucks and trailers and turn them into functioning gaming computers. During the series, Matt and I will both be working on our own vehicles and posting videos at the same time. This will give you guys a chance to follow both builds and the different styles of construction that we're both definitely going to be taking. Now, for this video series, we partnered up with both Tamiya and EVGA. Tamiya provided us with the vehicles and some accessories for the vehicle. I'll be using this, the Tamiya King Hauler. This is kind of an old school American style. And from this base, I'll be taking and customizing a little bit. My plan is to take this truck and kind of lean on some of the common modifications done in the full size semi world and the RC to turn this into something a little bit more personalized. But we'll get to the truck portion of the build later on down the road. At the beginning of this, we're going to be mainly focusing on the trailer and the construction of the PC. For my trailer base, I chose the deep freeze or reefer trailer style. This is a pretty traditional style semi trailer. It's a triple axle design rather than a maybe more traditional double axle, but it does have a refrigeration unit on the front and then it's made to have these generic graphics put on the side. We're not going to have these generic graphics. We'll have our own twist on that that we'll get later on down the road also. Now, while I decided to go with a very American style tractor and then the trailer is just a very typical box trailer, Matt went with a cab over Mercedes tractor and a container style rear trailer. The differences between both our trucks and trailers are pretty wide and are going to lend to some very different styles of final build once these things are wrapped up. Now for the computer hardware side, we did partner with EVGA and Matt and I have agreed that the hardware we're going to use for the main components is going to be identical. So any of the differences in performance will be due to our design of the PC and its layout itself. The motherboard we're using is the EVGA H370 Stinger. This is an ITX size board. And since we're trying to fit these into RC cars, it's kind of an obvious reason why we went that route. Now, EVGA makes boards for Intel chips, so we decided to use Intel Core i5 9400Fs. We'll be using 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz G-Skill Ripsaw RAM. We're using a Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte M.2 drive. For our graphics card, we'll be using the EVGA RTX 2060 KO. And for the power supply, we'll be using the EVGA Supernova. This is the 550 GM and it's 80 plus gold. And since the trailers that we'll be using are kind of awkward shapes, we decided to go with some liquid cooling and we're using the EVGA 120 millimeter AIOs. EVGA also sent over their Z10 keyboard and their Toro X10 Carbon mouse. Now, those we're not gonna try and fit into the trailer. Those will be able to be used with it set up as an actual workstation of sorts. And the last item from EVGA is their XR1 capture card. Now, as you can see here, I've already started to assemble the trailer. It's generally assembled other than the panels that would enclose the box portion of this. And I did that so that I could kind of start mocking up and making some decisions for the design of how I want to build the PC inside of here. Now, Matt and I did agree on some rules or guidelines for this challenge. The goal of the challenge was to take and fit all of the components inside of the trailer needed to operate a gaming computer, with the exception of peripherals like a mouse, keyboard, and monitor. Now, we said that that you kind of get some bonus points if you did want to integrate those things into this. So that is an option. The main focus would be put onto concealing it inside. So from the outside, someone may just see this and assume that it's a run of the mill 114th model of a semi trailer because everybody's used to having those around. Now, a lot of the struggles or difficulties with trying to conceal the fact that this will be a computer case is that trying to hide things like air intake so you don't see just big mesh cutout windows or cable connections for power, your monitor, your peripherals, things like that. Trying to do our best to just make this thing on the outward or just initial appearance, not be able to tell that there's anything different about it. Where the flexibility comes into play is how we plan to keep our thermals in check, how we plan to hide our cable connections, cable management, 
all of the typical things that would go along with building a normal PC. Now, before I get into my design and some assembly of what I've designed, I wanna run over the rules and how we're going to judge this. There is going to be a driving component. These do need to be functioning RCs. The semi portion needs to be functional and pull this trailer around while the PC still sits inside. Matt and I have agreed on some general outline of what those performance metrics are going to be as far as driving a certain distance and then having to back our semi trailer and truck into a certain designated area, hooking up the cables, getting it ready to benchmark. After the driving portion, we'll be doing traditional PC benchmarks. And what a benchmark is, is you run standardized tests to test the performance of the actual components in the design, the case. There's several different types of benchmarks. Matt and I will agree which ones we plan to use and that way we can compare head to head. And lastly, there will be some sort of viewer voting metric where you guys can judge the appearance and cable management, how you think we executed our build plans. But now let's jump into my design outline and how I plan to build this. I'll show you some of the CAD and then I'll show you some of the parts that we've already begun to make. Now, as you can see inside of the trailer, I've got some blue painters taped down. From there, I started making some marks to try and gauge how things were going to fit. But that was just to give me a general idea. From there, I jumped into my CAD package. In this case, I'm using Fusion 360. I modeled up most of the major components of this build, including the trailer itself, things like the motherboard, the power supply, graphics card, the AIO, including the fan, just the basics of what I needed so that I could start moving things around, and from there, deciding on how I was going to mount them. Now, this is the design of the trailer that I've got so far. Here you can see that I have the basic outline of the trailer and then you'll see a number of the components inside, including the motherboard, the graphics card, power supply, you'll see the radiator up front and the fan in front of that. Now my plan at this point is to showcase the motherboard power supply and graphics card at a 45 degree angle. Now I don't need these to be at a 45 degree angle to fit, but I wanted to do it to be able to kind of showcase them from the side. But we did note that you have to make this look concealed. So I've got some plans for that that we'll get to down the road. Now you'll also see a couple of other items, one being this black square on the side. And what that is, is a seven inch TFT monitor. This is a pretty standardized monitor. It runs off of USB power. It's got an HDMI in. And I plan to use this not for my main display, but just for an auxiliary, something that I can display stats for the actual PC hardware in real time. Another item you can see tucked in behind the motherboard tray here is this little unit. And what that is, is this small projector. This is just one of those inexpensive projectors you can find on Amazon. And the point of it is obvious. Now again, this isn't my main monitor output. It's just another option that hopefully I can use an HDMI switcher between these two so that I can have the outputs that I'm looking for because I still wanna be able to run a traditional monitor with better refresh rate, better resolution and clarity. The premise for my design style is that I plan to recreate the side panels that the Tamiya Semi normally uses. It normally uses this PVC side panel. It's got a number of cuts and design things made to fit into the trailer properly. Now I took and redesigned this piece, replicating exactly what it was so that then I could modify this style and make my own. So the side panel that you see here on the trailer is the start of my new version of that piece. Now, as you can see here by the design, it's not solid. You'll see through it. It's got holes for the projector and a number of just windows and areas that are opened up for style. Now there's also screw hole attachments throughout it. And those are to mount all of the braces and motherboard trays, things like that, that I need to make the inside of this computer function. I designed all of these parts to be able to be cut from solid sheet material. The stock side panels are 3 seconds inch thick. So what I did is I went to my plastic supplier and bought a four by eight sheet of material. From there, I took these designs, programmed them to be cut on my CNC router. After I had all of those cut, I also designed up these magenta pieces, which will act as the mounts between the two pieces of flat stock. So my goal for tonight is to take and assemble the pieces 
pieces that I've already cut in 3D print and start getting some of these pieces of hardware into this trailer and see how my design style is going to begin to work out. So let's jump into that now. So we got the PSU bracket mounted to the PSU and I've installed the 3D printed brackets on either side. So now that and the motherboard are done, the only thing I have left to do is to sandwich this plate between the 120 millimeter radiator and the fan. And along with that, another set of 3D printed mounts will go on each side of this plate. I've got the motherboard on the motherboard tray mounted to the back wall. Same goes for the PSU and my AIO. Now with this, so this is just my first shot at it. Some of my design intentions were meant to be iterative. It all looks great in CAD, but until you get it in the real world, you just don't know how it's all going to work out. My PSU is one area where I can already tell I need to do a little bit of modification. The ABS sheet that I'm using to support it not quite rigid enough to hold it in place. I'm gonna to need to put a little bit of a bracket on the bottom corner of the PSU itself, just to get it to sit parallel with the you know, bottom tray of the trailer and the trailer itself. But the, uh, the front bracket to it is working as designed. It's just starting to get a little bit of a twist in it. A simple 3D printed kind of V-shaped foot will solve the backside of it and it'll still look pretty clean. The front mounted radiator is going to work as I intended. The sheet fits nice. The fan is on the front side and to get fresh air in the later stages of this build, I'll be actually cutting out the back side behind this refrigeration unit, which is modeled on the front side of the trailer. And that'll allow the vents that are molded into that to become functional, allowing for the fresh air intake to draw air in over the radiator and into the trailer itself. Now, obviously I'll need exhaust and I'm going to need more than just the one fan drawing air into this unit. But We'll get to that a little bit later, just little steps at a time at this point. Now I have the AIO in place and I do have the tubes going to the top side of the radiator. Probably not ideal with the inlet and outlet tubes should probably be at the bottom for, you know, better fill and less cavitation, things like that. But for this purpose, I think that it's gonna work well enough. I did not mount the pump to the motherboard yet. I feel like I'm gonna have to take this off and on several times. So trying to just not apply it, remove it, having to you know remove thermal paste, reapply over and over and over. So for now, it's just sitting there with the protective plastic still in place. Now I have not mounted the 2060 KO yet. This is something that I wanted to get the motherboard in place first. I've got a flexible PCI Express cable. I wanted to see just how flexible everything was going to be, how things were gonna look. And then I could confirm that the way that I had it shown in my 3D model was really the way that it was going to work in the real world here. So that's gonna be something we tackle in the next episode. Now I do still have the seven inch monitor that will get mounted in this area roughly. Now we have mounted one of the side panels on the back side of the trailer here. There will be ones that go on the front side as well. And the front section of it will have a 3D printed bezel that integrates this into that area. That is something again, we'll also tackle on the next episode. The projector. Now the projector has got cutouts on the backside panel that we already cut. I've mocked it up into place and I did kind of mismeasure somehow the speaker outlet area. So but that's a very small adjustment, but one that will have to be made nonetheless. There's probably some other changes that I'll run into as we move forward, but if that was the only one, I guess I did all right. But coming up with a 3D printed mount to hold this in position properly, hopefully allowing for some angle adjustment. And I did add windows so that I could reach in to hit the buttons on the top and the focus lever on the side. 
So those will be in the correct location. Everything else should work just fine. In the next episode, I'll also likely start running power cables from the PSU to the graphics card, to the motherboard, just seeing if there's anything that I want to integrate in for some cleaner cable management, either some cable trays and 3D printed trays or shrouds, things to clean everything up, make it look more of like a polished, you know, thought through design. The main components though are going together pretty well. We obviously have a good amount of room on the back side of this trailer. So once we get the graphics card installed here in the trailer, it does leave me some room left in the back. Now I do want to integrate the XR1 capture card as well as I'm thinking about including a wireless keyboard and mouse. And I actually bought a couple setups just to see how exactly they were going to fit. I did some shopping and found this very small wireless keyboard. Super thin, just not a lot of frills to it. Not the highest of qualities by any means. Not the type of keyboard that I would normally like. This is kind of a scissor switch. It's not a mechanical or anything like that, but it is wireless. So I think that after we get the graphics card integrated, I will have room to store my keyboard and possibly my mouse, hopefully in a way that's integrated such that it could be pulled out and accessed cleanly or possibly even through the rear functioning doors of the semi-trailer. That's yet to be seen and still plenty of time to make those decisions. But that is going to do it for this episode of the RCPC. This is obviously a significant deviation from my typical content, but it still ties together RC and another hobby that I really enjoy, which is PCs. So if you guys enjoy this, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell so you see the episodes of the RCPC as soon as they get uploaded. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.